testimonies, miracles of what Jesus did for people like you and I. What God cannot do does not exist. My name is Joy. I am making this video from Luxembourg. I am the woman that God has shown mercy. I want to thank God for his goodness upon my life, upon the life of my family. Me and my husband, we have been married for 17 years. And I have been on this fire altar since 2021. And we were believing God for the fruit of the womb. I was getting pregnant, but I was having miscarriages. So I had multiple miscarriages. And the doctors, they were not able to explain why I was having all these miscarriages. But thank God, I was very happy because I was already on the fire altar. I said, if I'm able to get pregnant, that means I will carry my baby. So I hold on to God and I hold on to my faith and I believe that God will do it. And thank God because the testimonies I was hearing on this altar, it, this fire altar, built my faith. My faith was so strong that nothing can move my faith. I believe that God will do it. I remember last year, Pastor Jerry asked us to write congratulation notes, what we want God to do for us. And I wrote, I said, God, help me to get pregnant and to carry my pregnancy to full term. And glory be to God. That last year, I made up my mind. I said, I'll be feeding myself with the communion and the baby in my womb. Also. So I was taking the communion every day, feeding myself and feeding the baby in my womb. And then I was not pregnant yet. And I found that I was pregnant in September. Then I was a little bit scared because I don't know what will happen. But glory be to God, because I was already on the fire altar, God took away the fear. And I remember Pastor Jerry keep on declaring last year that what we are afraid of the most will not happen. That was my word of knowledge. I say, thank you, Jesus. I hold on to that word. I say, God, help me to carry my pregnancy to full term. And when I deliver my baby, I will come on this fire altar to give all the glory to God. And thank you, Pastor Jerry. Thank you for all you are doing. God continue to bless you, bless your ministry. Thank you, thank you. I want to say thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful, God, for what you have done for me and my family. Today, I have my evidence. Here is my evidence. What God cannot do does not exist. I have a second testimony about my brother. The devil last year attacked his mind with insanity. But I told him not, be, not to be afraid. I asked him to connect to this fire altar and he did. Glory be to God, today is perfectly well. I want to say thank you, Pastor Jerry, for what you are doing in our generation. The oil upon your head will not run dry. God will continue to bless you. Thank you. What God cannot do does not exist. Yeah, I've testified from United Kingdom. I was uh, uh, diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer some couple of months ago. All through this time, I've been taking treatment, and my, my friend come to me and tell me that uh, there's a pastor praying for people for healing in Nigeria, Pastor Jerry. So he, he, he showed me the, the link in the internet, which I was following off. So whenever I see prayer, I always join. And I saw a whole lot of testimony that is people are testifying who have been following him. And then, then I know that mine will be possible because I said what God cannot do does not exist. So I was following him. He prayed for me, praying for every member of the uh, everyone. It was even when he was praying one day, he said, Oh, there are people who have posted cancer, but this is their time. We should claim it. Oh, the Lord, the Lord is showing mercy on people with prostate cancer. The Lord is showing mercy on people with prostate cancer. The Lord is showing mercy on people with prostate cancer. I decree, let every road away. Let every road away. I claim it. They now say, okay, I should go and do test. But I went to do test now. The, ne the test now came up. After two days came out as negative, which is normal. 
I don't longer have prostate cancer anymore. So in fact, when I saw this, I jumped up. I was very happy. I said, look, what God cannot do does not exist. How? How? This prayer I've been following, Pastor Jerry, is in Nigeria. He's not in London with me. He has not placed hand on me to pray for me. Yet his prayer is manifesting in my life. That is, I really believe what God can do, not do, does not exist. That's why I know that he's a man of God. Not even one person. From London, from Nigeria, America, every area, every world, they come out and testify what God has done for them. So I cannot have my testimony. Because God has healed me. I have to testify. That's why I say I must testify. This testimony. Testify, I'm testifying this morning, this morning. I must take the word that this is what God has done for me through uh, Pastor Jerry in Nigeria. So I've, I've never seen such a thing in my life. And I thank God for my life that I survived it. Pastor Jerry and the member of a, a pastor, God bless them. God give them more life and prosperity. I know what God cannot do does not exist. With my own, I know that nothing is impossible for God that I cannot do. If God can use Pastor Jerry to come and heal me in London, I know him just by television, but I don't have not spoken with him. He never placed his hand on top of my head. I received the healing. The healing he was praying, the prayer he was praying in Nigeria. That's why I know that God is really a miracle God. What God cannot do does not exist. And God bless you all. God bless you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May God bless you. Hello everyone. My name is Elizabeth and I am giving this testimony from the United States of America. Maryland, precisely. 2011 was the last uh marital celebration we had in you know my father's house last year i clocked 40 so obviously by god's grace this year i'm going to be 41 so we've all been praying i had been praying you know but there was just so much disappointment and i think it was during that time that i got to hear of um nsppd i think a friend sent the link to me that was 2021 so i started praying with it i i i love it like I love the fire and I think I what I love more is you know it's not just about the miracle 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 but it's also a platform that encourages that teaches you know holiness you know sanctification you know like consecration to God you know Pastor Jerry is always you know talking about that as well so I really really love that so fast forward to yeah, last year so I remember I was on the altar 7 a.m. But obviously at our time here is 2 a.m. So I remember Pastor Jerry was like, there's a lady, there's two men, you know, that are talking to you. But out of those two, there's one, there's one you think fits the more, there's one you think, you know, he's the one or something like that. He, he said he's not the one i don't know who this young woman is you have been desiring and saying god send me my own husband and two people showed up at the same time but one fitted exactly the physical things that you ask the lord for one fitted the other one is good but not as the other one that fitted exactly and the lord said the one that fitted exactly what you is not your husband and the Lord said be careful of a wolf be careful of a wolf be careful of a wolf I pray for direction for you I remember he said he's not the one be well folks so, so when I heard that I'm like oh my god you know because when you put your mind on someone you know physically you're thinking you know you had the packs so my whole mindset is yes this is my final bus stop you know so I think um, some weeks after that, the guy came to me and said, oh, if there's no intimacy, that he doesn't think the relationship can go on. You know, immediately he said that I just knew, okay, so this is what Pastor Jerry was saying. It was hurtful, like it was painful, but I thank God for that word. He already prepared me for, you know, what was coming. That happened on February 16th. It was a Thursday. And I remember on the Sunday, just like three days after, three or four days after, my phone kept ringing like it was blowing up so much in church. 
my best friend was calling me I'm like you know why is she calling me why is she calling me why is she calling me and she said oh Elizabeth I'm so sorry you know to disturb you I've never called you for this type of thing before I just wanted to ask you like there's this guy that wants to meet you he's been disturbing me for your number since December in my mind I'm thinking since December and this is February and from there he called me and then he was he started talking obviously you know he was really about marriage and then I was on altar on May 4th and I remember Pastor Jerry said you know this is your Rema word pick a date pick a date pick a date I picked June 15th Thursday June 15th and to the glory of Almighty God I got married on um uh, June 15th the same day I picked June 15th like I don't even want to you don't want to know how happy my parents were because this is like 12 years after and they are witnessing this I just want to thank God I want to thank God for showing me mercy is nothing but mercy he didn't just answer my prayers I prayed specifically for an honorable marriage and God gave me something honorable he gave me an honorable man he gave me a handsome man he gave me not just something physical but spiritually emotionally financially is complete like God exceeded my expectation that's just all I can say people that you even people that I even call my friends will be mocking me mocking when I say mocking ah it's not by prayer it's not by prayer stop praying but I bless God because those same people they've seen it it's not even just the marital breakthrough so many miracles from there it's just like God is just bombarding me. Boom, 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 boom. And they are looking like, oh. So every time she writes, I'm the one the Lord has shown mercy. This is what she was talking about. Oh, so every time she writes, um, it is done. This is what she's talking about. Every time she puts something up on a status. Oh, so this is what she's talking about. God did not put me to shame. And I just want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Jerry, for helping making my dream come true. I got married 2016. Before I got married, they told my husband not to marry me. I was not going to have children. Some said I've entered early menopause. They told him a lot of things. We started. It was, it was a journey of pain. Preaching on the altar, ministering to people in the ministry, and you don't have a child. My programs have been cancelled severally, especially when it's a woman, women meeting and you're going to be the guest speaker. When they ask you and you say you don't have children, they'll tell you, we'll call you back. And they will never call me back. After my marriage, nobody else got married in my family. I'm not the first, I'm the third, but I was the first to get married. We started praying. 2018, I became diabetic, so it, there was complications. When I went to, this, to see the sonographer, the sonographer, the sonographer said, you can't conceive except with um, IVF. I said, person went over chop food, go go pay millions for picking. God, what you use me to give to others, I will not pay to have it. I refused. So somehow I went to the doctor. I said, doctor, they said um, I can't have children. My tubes were blocked. And the doctor said, let's do a, um, a flush on your tubes. So he did the flush. My daughters abroad sent me fertility drugs, and I took. I aided God. I, I wanted to help God. So I took those drugs, and I became pregnant the following month. I was so excited. One day they told me that um, because I'm diabetic, I have to be on insulin injections. This time I was injecting myself four times every day. I, was, I also have to pierce my fingers to check my sugar four times every day. It was crazy. Going to the hospital for checkup, I was told I had incompetent service. <sighs> and they had to do the sac a sacklage. I was excited that at least the sacklage was, the service has been handled. Five months and two weeks, I had fever one Friday. 4th of July 2020 and before you knew it I lost the child before I returned to ministry my ministry was empty people had gone uh -uh. if God they use and they give other people why should you not help yourself some quoted scripture for me oh physician help thyself I couldn't help myself 2021 July again after losing that baby 2020 July 4th 2021 I became pregnant the same July the baby stopped growing somebody sent me an SPPD link I never knew that was what I wanted. I later joined 
But I will pray and not listen to testimony. I will not even take communion. When I lost that baby 2021, everything shut down. I said to myself, get on the altar, be serious. When I got to the altar, I introduced my siblings. I said, let's pray. We started praying. 2021 October, I told myself, go and look for who will help you. I know you're a minister of God, but you need a higher grace. That day, a man of God called me and said, woman of God, I have a revelation that you need to go and look for your father. I said, I have a father in ministry. He said, go and look for your father. I said, I have a father. But after this man told me, and he's an elderly person, I went home, I told my husband, do you believe that I don't have a spiritual father? All these years. He said, but we have a covering. I said, I was told it's not my covering. Let's pray. That night, I started crying. I said, God, show me who, my, who I carry his DNA. That night, I had an encounter with Papa. He said to me, daughter, come. I said, daughter. I called my husband. I said, Pastor Jerry, call me his daughter. I slept the, that same night. He now called on my husband. He said, son, come. I said, even you, let's be going. Three, four times that night, I encountered Papa. I woke up in the morning. I said, honey, please buy me tickets. I'm going to look for my father. I said, what time does he come for NSPP? I discovered discover he comes by five in the morning. I started coming earlier than Papa to NSPPD. I will sit down and as he's passing, I'll greet him, good morning, sir. He will answer me, good morning. I said, be marking my face, so, because I will come. And I said, sir, two things. Number one, they said I don't have a father. And when I prayed, God said, you are my father. Papa looked at me. I said, I'm not going, no. He gave me a few days, prayed, and accepted me. Wow. Then he now told me, number two, God has asked me to fight your battles. Wow. I relaxed. I was like, it is finished. I came back to Abuja and I took NSPPD extremely serious. I started coming every morning. Even when Papa is needing any prayer, I will be praying about my own pain. Lord, just one evidence. Show people that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a waste, that I have a father now over my life, somebody that speaks over me. Last year, um, 2022, I was pregnant again. Went to scan, they said it's chemical pregnancy. I said, which one is chemical? How did it enter my pregnancy? I don't know how that one happened, it ended. But before then, on this altar, I, we began to pray. My mom connected, my siblings connected. Last year, my brother, who was over 40, got married. Ha -ha. Okay. My elder sister, who was also over 40, we started praying. Somebody came for a hand in marriage. And upon coming, he just went to see my mom. He had stroke. His kidneys shut down. We began to pray on this altar. And God honored us. God reversed the kidney. The stroke was healed. My sister got married January 19th this year. It didn't end there. That same week, my sister got married. Two of my cousins got married. The same Obiakos family. In fact, people were asking, I went to Nuna Chop. Three people one week. God did it. Last year, I began to take in. Every other month, if I test positive and I show my husband that I'm positive, the following morning I will miscarry it. One of my sisters gave me it, um, herbs to drink and have to mix it with gin. I was asked a woman of God. So somehow he got okay, okay, inside gin because you are looking for fruit of the womb. I took it and I stood on the altar. It was 7 a.m. and I made a prayer. God, if you are God and you know you can give me ch children, let Pastor Jerry mention the case about this thing I'm about to drink. If he doesn't mention it, I'll drink it. If he mentions it, I won't drink. I have not finished saying it. Papa said, I don't know who you are. That thing they gave you to drink. Don't drink it. Don't drink it. I will give you your own. I will give you your own. I, I said, so you had. I didn't know where I threw it. 28th of October last year, I wrote a book, Paris of the Anointed. I said, God, I want to give it to Papa to, to pray before I dedicate it. After praying, it was three books. After praying, I gave him two. And I took one to myself, placed it on my tummy, and I said, my mantle. But when I left, I started feeling funny that same day. I woke up and I told my husband, I said, I feel like running a test. I took a test, it was positive. Ah. I said, ah, I became fearful. But this time I took NSPPD as if my life depended on it. I won't talk to you. No matter who is talking to me, even if my husband is saying, honey, I'm going to work, I'll be saying, what God cannot do this. I don't respond because this time it has to happen to me somehow. I just needed it. And beloved, the journey began October. On my birthday, 6th of December, Papa said something. Because I asked God for a word. He said, who is this person? Why are you afraid? Where is this fear coming from? Have I not told you? 
that it will end in praise. Have I not told you that I've gone ahead of you? Why are you scared? Where is this fear coming from? Where is this fear coming from? And the Lord said, have I not told you that I am with you? Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Have I not told you? It will not end the way the devil planned it. Why are you afraid? By the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I command, let every fear be reversed by fire. Let every fear be reversed. Let it be reversed. Let it be reversed. It was on my birthday. I held my faith and I said, if Papa said he has, God has gone ahead of me, it is settled. A few days later, I started bleeding. We got to the hospital. The doctor said to me, the baby is still intact. But your placenta has this and has that. I said, what God cannot do does not exist. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said to me, at this three months now, we need to do a, a Sadaka Sackland. I said, doctor, everything I've done before that failed, I won't do again. It is either supernatural or it's not supernatural. Ah, yeah, yeah. I'm not doing anything. So we stayed on the altar. My husband agreed with me. Beloved, five months, two weeks. The same time I had that loss, 2020, the same pattern, the same time, fever, contraction. I looked at my husband. He said, honey, let's go to the hospital. I said, daddy, do you remember the first time? We went to the hospital. We came back empty. I said, it came with fever. It came on a Friday. Today is Friday and this is fever. Can we just start praying NSPPD? I started searching. This was happening in April. But the NSPPD we searched was 15th of February. I don't know how we got to 15th of February. We were playing it and praying. All of a sudden, Papa said, I don't know who you are. You are pregnant. I don't know what I'm hearing. Incompetent service. He mentioned the exact word. He said, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, right now, I reverse it. I don't know who you are. It appears you're pregnant. But they are saying to you, this is what I see written in front of me. Incompetent cervix. Oh. Incompetent cervix. Oh. That's what the word I see written. I don't know what this means and how it affects your pregnancy. But whatever it means, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, let it be reversed right now. Let it be reversed and the Lord said it's something that has happened again and again is a pattern is a pattern but this one will be different this one will be different for mercy has stepped in let your amen turn the louder church we prayed and repeated just that part we were, re we were rewinding it beloved five months we passed it contraction came again this time it was heavy. I was contracting 66 minutes. And the doctor said, if it is 66 minutes, then you're about to deliver. But let's check your service. My husband was praying in tongues. I was declaring. NSPPD was playing. The doctor wore his gloves and checked me. Looked at me and looked at the other doctors. Say, service closed. The statement is used to say, service tightly closed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How come you are contracting in your tummy, but there's no contraction in your service? I said, what God cannot do does not exist. He said, treat her for infection and let her rest. Hey. Beloved, we won the battle of six months and two weeks. The last week of May throughout, Papa was declaring, you are in a journey and you are very close to the end of the journey. You will not cry. Yeah, but, but, but I don't know who I am praying for, but the Lord just wrote this word in my spirit. You will not go through this journey and you will come to the ending and begin to cry. Amen. I say, amen. That's the first time I started having contraction. I packed my things. The doctor has said, come to the hospital. We'll give you an injection that will, that will mature the lungs of your baby. Reasons, if you are diabetic, the child ha can ha will have congenital issues. We have breathing problem. We have cardiac issues. On the 1st of June, while we we're going to the hospital, Papa was declaring, I don't know who you are. 2nd of June to 7th of June, he said, 2nd, 7th will not be a day of tears for you. I reverse it. Body with any evil emergency waiting for you on the second of June or on the 13th of June at the sound of your amen. I can't, I I command, let it be broken. When we got in, they operated me, beloved. They just showed me the child very quickly and removed the child, and the baby was blue, there was no, no pause. They brought me out of theater. I said, where is my son? They said, he's coming. The next thing, I, they rushed him out with oxygen. He was blue. That first into second, my child started giving up. 
Why too? I was giving up. I was passing out. I started shouting, give me water to drink. They said, they can't give you water. You have to say yes. I told my husband, I said, give me water. Play NSPPD. He brought water. I dipped my hands in the water and I was putting it in my mouth. I said, I will not die. My baby was having crisis. My husband was confused, but we're playing NSPPD. Second came and passed. Third, fourth, my child was having complication. Crisis till seventh. The pediatrician came and said, why did you refuse to take insulin in pregnancy? You are the reason your child is like this. I said, ma, insulin didn't help me before. It won't help me now. She said, whatever happens to the child is your fault. I said, what God cannot do does not exist. And she said to me, if he survives, I will use you as a case study. I said, get, get ready for a case study. And she said, it's not possible for eight months to survive. Not possible for a diabetic mom to have a child and refuse to take insulin and the baby survives. I said, watch my God act it all out for you. And God did it. They took my child to see a cardiologist. That was the longest two hours of my life. They said you won't go. My child was on oxygen and they took him to see the cardiologist. Beloved, the cardiologist was throwing my son up. Who said this boy has cardiac issue? Why is he not sucking his mother's breast? Who said his lungs? No respiratory issue. There's no congenital. He was throwing the boy. The boy was crying. He said, give the mother to breastfeed. Remove this sheep, pull the oxygen, and threw away this oxygen. The boy that doctor said, it's not possible to be complete. We made a foul. He's just six weeks old. He does not look like it. He's weighing over almost four points. He's feeding well. Beloved, he's alive. Hey. I thought God I'll bring him to where you answered. Uh -huh. Papa, this is your son. Hey. I didn't waste my time submitting to you. <laughs> what God cannot do? What our God cannot do? And as people celebrate the Lord. You did not hear the testimony. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Somebody celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. And the people here, Jesus, they here. I did not hear you, Jesus, they here. Is he walking on? Is he walking on? Is he walking on? You know, in laid back Nigerian slang, the young people say, you know, this is shake. The Lord has shown devil serious double barreled shake. Where do we begin? Where do we end? Eh? Hey. But then again, that word of knowledge, that word of knowledge, to even imagine that this word already came in February, and that people of God, God is here. God is here. God is here. Every part of this journey is stunning. But people of God, I don't care what the medical report is. I don't care what the medical report is. But as your amen will turn about, every medical report, I announce, it has become a major testimony. Oh my God, oh my Jesus, God, oh my God. Jesus, I don't even know where to begin to. Jesus, I don't Jesus, even know what Jesus, I know what Jesus, I want to say. Jesus, where do I begin? Ah, where do ah, I begin? Ah, is it in the sacrilege? Or is it in the in the closed cervix? Or is it in the insulin that she did not take? You know, or is it in the fact that they said the child will have cardiac issues? And then where do we begin from? Where do we begin from? Or well, people of God, again, watch that testimony. She said when she became serious. I want to to lay your hand on your head. Call your name. Say Jerry. Okay. Okay. Say you will sure be serious. Be serious. Say Jerry. Okay. Say be serious. Be serious. With the altar of fire. The altar of fire. That people of God, are you seeing the pattern of testimonies yes, here? People are saying, when I became serious, serious, when I became serious, when I became serious, I, what our God cannot do. Does Does not exist. Exist. And if you're trying to wrap your head Papa, around us. Papa, before you okay. move, yeah. look at the entire family, the testimonies. The testimonies. It's oh, not just how. It is not just how. Oh, everybody, three one, one day, and her sister three over 40, the brother over 40, 40. Uh, the two cousins, cousins, you know, and all of that. Everybody's Everything celebrations. And, and who said you will not end this week with celebration. Who said you will not end this week with celebration? 
Somebody help me declare after me. Say, I will laugh my laugh. Say, I will dance my dance. If you believe it, let your amen thunder like fire. People of God, why you're still trying to wrap your head around all of that? 17 years childlessness. 17 years. I am not sure that you did. And what I did not say, I did not say seven months. I did not say seven years. I said 17 years. And she said, I stayed on the altar. I took communion. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know. I don't know. God, we will never get used to this. And the sweet videos, help me wave your hands to the two around me. Help me wave your hands to the God who does wonders beyond our comprehension. And while you are still trying to wrap your head around that, look at that daddy, prostrate cancer. Yes, prostrate cancer. And yes, I love the way, the way he was saying, he said, he did not even, he did not even lay hands on me. You know, he is not he's in Nigeria. He's not and, uh, yes, he's not in London. I'm in London. I guess that's the part that stunned him so much because he kept repeating it again and again. He just kept saying, he's a lot. People of God, this is the way the word of God works. So the Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. Shout, yeah, 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 yeah. That they need to we get so tired of <laughs> Yeah, people Jesus. of God are what our God cannot do Does Does exist. Exist. and I love that miracle wedding yeah. I love that miracle wedding I love that miracle marriage Ooh. people of God what our God cannot do Does Does exist. Exist. and I want to say to someone who was part of the today's prayer the Lord has already heard you Amen. the Lord has already heard you Amen. And people of God right now if you're ready with your communion we are ready right now we pray over every liquid you have it ceases to be ordinary Amen. it becomes the very blood of Jesus Amen. we pray over every substance you have it's this is to be ordinary. It Amen. becomes the very flesh of Jesus. Amen. And our first communion is the communion of I am in my manifestation Amen. Amen. I am in my manifestation Amen. Amen. Go ahead and eat of the flesh of Jesus.